Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a cool unboxing for you. I cut it open because it had my address all over it. And it's not like I'm being lazy and I didn't want to set up the face cam, okay? I just didn't have the time, okay? Jeez. Didn't have the time to angle my fucking camera properly either, or my light. Anyway, this is coming in from Tri-State EDC, a.k.a. The tri stash. And uh, Cole was too lazy to give me stickers. So, whatever, dude. I don't need your tri stash stickers anyway. Um, these are from Brass Brigade. Man, I am going to struggle with this word the whole time. I, I don't know what it is, but you put these two together, and man, I just want to say Brigade. I don't know why. It's Brigade. Brass Brigade. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jason Grant is a really cool dude. I had him on Lefty Live not too long ago. And this is a prototype, essentially, of his SG Gripper. Actually, no, it's just going to be called the Gripper. Um, SG Knives made this handmade custom of it. And then it's going to be, obviously, prototyped by Best Tech. And then hopefully put into production by Best Tech and, you know, pre-order, all that good stuff. But here you can go. Talpik Hidayat is the one who made this. Uh, proudly handcrafted in Indonesia. You can see it's a three-inch blade with LMAX, titanium. Looks like there's some copper. It was made on September 12th. Okay? Check it. Cool stickers from Brass Brigade and SG Knives. All right. It's enough. Here it is. There's this thing, too. I don't know what it is. A tool, which is cool. A cool tool. Again, this is a handmade custom. Uh, you heard me right. This is a cool-ass box, man. It's, like, made out of wood. Damn. That is nice. Real nice. Clark. There you go. SG Knives. Some cool stuff. And, um, yeah, so... <clears throat> this is the gripper, guys. I had not really even known about it until about I don't know, a month ago or two. And um, I guess nobody really did. Not even Jason. <laughs> um, long story short, he was on vacation in Hawaii. And he drew this knife. Because he was like, yo, I like knives. Let me uh, draw my own knife. You know, I want something to be like perfect for me. And um, he got some inspiration from this knife right here, the EMP EDC Nimble. You could see they're not, like, identical in any way, um, but he got inspiration on the kind of three-way uh, deployment method thing from John Rusk over at EMP EDC, and he spoke to him, and he got his blessing, uh, which is really nice of him to do. That's the kind of stuff you want to do if you're a good dude. So props to um, Jason and to John. But anyway, this is the gripper. You see copper there on the pivot. You see his backspacer is all fragged out. He did get another one of these now. I believe um, it's the same size. So the production version is going to be, I believe, a three and a half inch blade. Um, this is three inches. And he got another custom made in this size with a raised up... Um, backspacer and a different clip or a better clip and then he did a three and a half inch one as well no detent lash um yeah we're gonna have to just rip into this guys um this is gonna be your first impressions i guess so maybe i should do the zoom in thing first you see it's a small knife uh, i just showed you it next to the nimble three inch blade we are dead on dead nuts nice clip um, I think he was trying to make it a little more deep carry or something. I don't, I'm not sure. And it, oh, it stands off of the scale. He probably didn't like that very much. Um, functionally it could work, but yeah, that is kind of weird when it does that. Um, there's that, that's where the tool goes. I showed you. Um, but yeah, I mean, cool, right? Let's open it. Just feeling the detent feels pretty good actually. Cole thought I might think it's a little light. Ooh, almost cut myself. Fantastic edge on that. Look at that blade, guys. Just a mean-ass warning, right? And it's a hollow grind. 
So, man, that's nice. Holy shit. Oh, that is thin out to the edge, guys. All right, so that's a close-up. I want to show you a comparison to the F5 because I think the holes on here are very similar. You can see that. So I'm going to get some knives in this range that I think makes sense. The Roxy 3 also has that hole. So you can see these are all very similar size knives. Um, I think my custom nurse is kind of in this size range as well. A little bit different in terms of or the hole and everything, but it's very similar. I think these two are more of the same size and then these two are more of the same size, right? But those are your kind of three inchy knives with holes. Actually, here you go. Here is the Nimble. There's another one. I don't know if I have any more in that size range. Not, oh, I have the Cuff 3.0, but um, it is being sharpened right now. And the Field Duty EDC is a little bit big, but similar. Anyway, these three have the kind of same hole design. So let me get these other two out of here. Absolutely excellent action on all of these knives, to be honest this way put that away you can see the hole very similar here i think it's more it's kind of like an in-between right because look it's a little longer than the f5 hole so it's kind of more like this one i don't know they're very similar all of them so anyway you can see the um size comparisons there and just kind of i think these type of knives are probably what jason is into <laughs> if you can tell um now this one has that warny blade on it the only one i showed you i think was the um the roxy and maybe the gavco has a warning too so let's try the action on the clothes see how our access is okay it's pretty smooth right-handed reverse flick Okay, so does have a very nimbly type detent, which is light. If you give it the old flickeroony, you're not gonna have an issue, obviously. Front flipper. Yep, works really well. Thumb flick. Yeah. I would tighten it up a little bit um, on the detent. Let me just feel the Man, this whole hand custom thing is, wow. Feels like a production knife. And I mean that in, like, a good way. Lefty flick. Come on, baby. Okay. All right. Hang on. Ah, oh, I can just hold it wherever I want. Look at that. Ergos. Let's feel the ergos. So, ergonomically, right off the bat, I am going to say that this gap right here is a little bit of an issue for me personally. It's just too much of a gap. It is really reminiscent of that Nimble, um, where I just, I wasn't the biggest fan of the gap on this either, but I can kind of hold this one back here, and I've just gotten super comfortable with it, and I really do enjoy the Ergos on this knife now. Um, this one kind of has a similar thing going on. It's not quite as comfortable. I think it's because this is all a little bit more rounded off, where... This one's more squared off, and it just, like, right here is very squared off, so it's not quite as comfortable. It's still very comfortable, and for a three-inch knife, I mean, excellent, right? Um, check the edge. Yep, good to go on the edge there. We all know who the master of cutting is around here. It's me. <laughs> Not. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, so let's just fidget with it a little bit left-handed. flick a -rooney. Thumb flick a -rooney. I didn't. I meant front flip a -rooney. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like the. It doesn't seem like the lock bar matters, does it? Wow nice okay so it just doesn't matter where i put my fingers it's awesome 
Now I am noticing that the hole, so right here, see where I'm lining up? It's just kind of tight right here. It's a little bit tight and my finger wants to come out of there. So I'm really jamming it in. And then as you go up, you're kind of hitting, let me do that again. You're kind of like, you're, my finger is hitting that corner right there. You see that? So I can feel it a little bit. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I wonder if that's the same thing right-handed. Yep. So I'm feeling that corner. Um, so that's not ideal for me. The thumb flick's really good. But again, I'm going right over that corner. Um, is it the end of any worlds? No, you're probably going to get used to it. But it seems like the hole is maybe a, a touch higher than it needs to be. Or this area here could be trimmed down a little bit, but then you're going to have problems. Where are you going to have problems? Where are you going to have That's the flipper. It's already pretty toned down, so I don't know. See the jumping on there. Interesting. Can you see it? It's hard. There you go. You can see it a little bit. Let me try to contrast it for you. There you go. Not, it looks a little bit like, that jumping looks a little bit like sort of an afterthought on here. Um, almost like this was cut and then it was just like etched off there. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you see that? It kind of looks unfinished right there. Um, you're going to have that happen, but that's like any front flipper, back flipper situation. You got to pull back and it works great. I mean, the detent, I would strengthen it up, but it's not like it needs it. I mean, if I compare it to, again, the nimble... I mean, it's almost right there with the same detent. The thing with the nimble is there is a, a lock bar pressure issue. If I put, if I go too high, I can't get this out now. So being left-handed, I'm putting pressure on this lock bar right now. So that I put my thumb down, I'm actually strengthening the detent. On this one, it does that a bit as well, it seems like. But it never gets to a point where like I can't flick it, which that's a bonus. You know, but I definitely enjoy the flick better on this one. And I'm going to tell you why right now. You see where the hole is? Let me uh, close this up. I don't know why this turned into a comparison, but you can see right there. See how the hole is down lower and away from the frame a little bit? So when I come through, I am nowhere near that frame. On this one, I come through and I'm going right into that frame with my finger. I don't know. Again, you can't see it, but there you go. So I'm actually touching right here on the frame. So I don't know how you get around that. Um, I know that the production version is supposed to be three and a half inches. So maybe that alleviates it somehow. Uh, maybe it'll be big enough that you could lower the hole a little bit. This is just me and my observation. You can obviously go down to the bottom of the hole and then you're good. So it works fantastically. It's not like it hurts. I'm just noticing that I hit it, and it's, man, that's satisfying. Uh, yeah, very satisfying. Now, Cole was commenting on the acoustics. Yeah, definitely has a very cool acoustic to it. You hear how when this one closes, kind of like thuds in a little bit? This one, oh, yeah, it just has some kind of, oh. Yeah, the deployment is the same on both, honestly. And again, I'm just comparing that knife. I have other ones I could pull out, but the closing is where I'm getting the fizz. Yeah, that sounds really nice, Clark. Um, let me put this one away again. Sorry. Yeah, I am. Uh, this is his first knife design. Um, and essentially the first prototype of it. And guys, man, the thinness is incredible. I love how thin this is. You can see here. Um, it feels thinner than this knife, even though it may not look like it. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit thinner. Um, 
but it feels so good in hand. The finish on this, I don't know if Best Tech is going to be able to kind of mirror this finish, but it's absolutely just a fantastic finish. The grip, because of the, you know, gripper, um, because of the frag pattern is freaking cool. Like, I love how the frag pattern is on this. QSP made this one. Um, yeah, they're pretty, they're very similar. Like, it's not rough frag pattern. So it's not like something that bothers you in pocket or anything, but it just gives you that little bit of extra uh, grip when you're feeling it. And yeah, guys, the more I've handled this now, my hand is used to it. And these ergos are money. This feels fantastic in my hand now. It's just something, every time I get a knife like this, I have to get used to that, that little gap here. You know what I mean? I struggle with that on knives. Like the Roxy here, you see how the Roxy, <clears throat> it doesn't do that. It kind of just has, it. it's part of the choil. So then my fingers are closer together. This is how I prefer a knife. See how close together those two fingers are right here? When you get a knife like this, you have this gap. And you're, I just somehow ha like mentally have to adjust to it. And I start to pull my finger down like this. And now they're close again. But if I hold it like I normally want to, it's like that. See the gap? Whereas on this knife, my fingers are much closer together. And it's just an adjustment. It's not an actual like negative, if you want to put it that way. To some people it may be, but um, to me it's just an adjustment and then I'm good. Um, front flipper, that was me. Let me try to see it, try that again. Yeah, so if it was me, I would maybe try to increase that jimping a little bit right here. Like maybe from right here up. And Jason, I don't know if you were looking for all this feedback. I'm just shooting from the hip here. That's how I roll. Um, but I would maybe from this line up try to do it as like more space together jimping so you get more traction on that you can see like on this you have very closely space jimping i can get a better grip on it when i go to fire it out um i love how this is designed though so that's why i'm saying like just from like maybe even just like right here up you know you have that and then you could get a little bit better grip now maybe everybody else is fine i can get used to it just saying it'd be maybe even better that way. And then I would do something about the jimping back here. I would do something about this flipper tab. I don't know. That It's just sharp right there. Like maybe try to flatten it out. Like go straight in here. Instead of having this little angled piece right here. Go straight in and put a little bit of jimping on it. And then you should be money. I mean it works pretty well. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I... It's a little bit of a struggle on that on that reverse flick where that hole is is getting me, um, and it's right left hand. It doesn't matter what hand, and maybe that's my size of hand. Are my hands chubbier than maybe Cole's are or Jason's are? And that because I didn't hear either of them mention it once that there was like an any type of concern with the where the hole is. So it could just be a big hands thing, and maybe with the three and a half inch version, it's a non factor, but. Just something to bring up. Uh, Weight-wise, yeah, I mean, it feels good. It's got a little bit of heft to it, but that's, you know, what you want. Um, on a knife called the Gripper with copper and whatnot, um, there's no milling in here at all. But they're thin slabs of titanium. So, again, there, I think there is milling in this knife, and they're either the same or this one could possibly weigh more, honestly. So um weight is good this blade is just gorgeous with that hollow grind um i do think he brought the hollow grind up a little bit if i'm not mistaken um which i think makes sense because then you can get an even uh thinner edge and you get a little bit more of a grind before it thickens out so that makes sense to me um the lock bar access it doesn't look good in my opinion it looks like you're, you're not going to have enough. And I would maybe add the little chamfers in here. Uh, is this like this on the back? See those little chamfer cuts or whatever they're called? Does he have them on the inside too? No, he doesn't. Um, what knife has that? I think my Leon Ma cuff does. Yeah. So I actually had this cut out to have more access. But you can see on this side it has that little 
cut. And I would think that that would be awesome to add that on both sides in here. But even though, like I said, it doesn't look good, when you get in there, it's fine. It really is. It's fine. Um, and if you want to go a little bit lower, you can and drop it. So, I mean, it works great, at least on this version. And, man, when that closing sound is just incredible. Um, L-Max was finished excellently. The belt satin is my favorite. So, you know, you got a winner there for me. Um, yeah. I mean, dude, this is his first knife. Like, are you kidding me? I hope to God when I get my prototypes that um, there is good in hand. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he fucking nailed it. This is awesome, dude. I love the shape of it. I love everything. Um, in my mind, though, I'm starting to think, like, three inches maybe is a little small. And maybe three and a half is going to be too big, dude. Like, I don't know if three and a quarter ever you know, crossed your mind, but like 3.25, 3.3 could be the sweet spot for this knife, you know, um, but that's just a thought, you're probably going to hit more people with that, you know, but yeah, guys, the more time I'm just spending with this, the absolutely more joy I'm getting right now, so I'm going to spend some time with this bad boy, a uh, couple days probably, and then I'll post up a full review um, these are my very, very initial thoughts, so it's a lot of rambling and whatnot. Jason, hope uh, hope you, you know, maybe got something out of that. Um, of course, I'm left-handed. It works great lefty, though. That's, you know, the lock bar is the only thing, really, that as a lefty I'm going to give you any information on. The rest is pretty ambidextrous, you know, feedback. Um, but yeah, this one works great left hand. I wouldn't even need to get like a lefty made. Could just, you know, damn. Yeah. See, I'm even getting used to the hole the way it is now too. Um, so there you go. Jimping is awesome, man. It's not too rough, but it definitely gives you some texture and it goes all the way up. Yeah, dude, Jason, you the man, dude. Thank you for letting me check this out. Cole, thanks for sending it my way. I'll link both those dudes below. Uh, Jason does have a YouTube channel, Brass Brigade, <laughs> uh, on YouTube. Go check it out. He's also on Instagram and everything. Uh, we'll be letting you know when the pre-order's coming. Dope-ass knife, bro. I will hit you with a full review soon. Love you all. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.